All right, it's time for another one of Davidson's greatest hits. Uh, welcome to second hour. My wife's already laughing at me, and I got ten words out. Um, I really, I know you don't think I have a heart, but I do feel bad um, that I've missed so much. I hate missing class um, as a teacher. My first two years, I missed one day total. Um, yeah, I don't know. Now I've missed, what, 10 this year? I'll do better, I promise. If it makes you feel better, I only missed one that was my fault. Everything else has been for a meeting. But anyway, that's enough of that stuff. All right, turn to this uh, little part of your lab book, probably around page 5 or 6. I'm not positive on that, as always. I never remember to look at the page number before I open up this little program. All right, what this is, is it's a cathode ray tube, and this is showing you the experiment uh, that J.J. Thompson did to help develop his theory of the atom. Uh, remember, we've gone on this long history trip from Democritus, who thought the atom was just small, indivisible particles. Aristotle said, no, he's wrong. They're still small, but they are divisible. They are infinitely divisible. Um, and he called them Heil. Then we had a bunch of guys come along. You can read them in your notes. Uh, Coulomb, Avogadro, Dalton, they all came up with little parts that would be thrown together um, into Dalton's model, which once again was just a small circle um, that was indivisible. Uh, then came Becquerel, and he saw that something came out of the uranium atom. And remember, if something comes out of the atom, then it must be divisible. All right, so then we were left here. Uh, we talked about J.J. Thompson um, and his, his experiment where he was able to take the atom and charge it somehow with uh, electricity. And he would get this beam. This beam, he didn't know exactly what it was, um, but he sent it through this cathode ray. Now, this cathode ray had some plates that were right here. You can see them. Um, and one of them was positively charged, and one of them was negatively charged. All right? And as he passed this beam of what we know now as electricity, but he didn't know that yet, as he passed it through this tube, it bent towards the side that was positive and away from the side that was negative. All right, based on Coulomb's law that we learned just a minute ago, well, I should say a couple of days ago, Coulomb came up with the universal law of attraction, which says that likes repel and opposites attract. Based on that law, Thompson was able to see that this beam of whateverness, you can quote me on that one, bent towards the positive or was attracted to the positive. So it must be opposite of positive. He also had the data that it bent away from the negative. So it must have been the same as negative. So he was able to come up with the idea that electricity, he didn't call it that yet though, but this, this beam of particles had a negative charge. Um, and he was also able to eventually use this to calculate their mass. And it was one two thousand um, the size of, that's ugly, but who cares, hydrogen. All right. Now, that's not very big, but that's what this demonstration pointed to us, that this beam was negative. All right. Now, oops, I wrote that in the wrong place. That should have been here. Your notes would just be that the beam was attracted to the positive side. About to run out of time. All right, now, we'll start this again in just a second because this is going to run out of time.